Hey, happy Christmas! It's Glenn Scrivener from Speak Life, and I hope you're having a wonderful Incarnation Fest, just really enjoying Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, what a wonderful truth. Um, let me just dive straight into our thought for today. Our, our phrase for today is, the Word became flesh. And let me read from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, and his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's just think about that phrase, the Word became flesh. First we'll think about the Word, and then we'll think about flesh. It's amazing to think that Jesus is the Word of God. And by that, it means that Jesus is the expression of God, the communication of God. Everything God wants to say to humankind is wrapped up in the person of Jesus. If you imagine a sort of a throne that represents God and a cartoon, let's think of a cartoon, a throne that represents God and a speech bubble coming out of the throne. What's in the speech bubble? Jesus is. Jesus is. He is the Word of God. He is the expression of God. He is what God is like. Tom Torrance used to be the uh, moderator of the Church of Scotland, and he tells this story about being uh, a chaplain during World War II. He came across this private who was 19 years old, and he was bleeding out from his wounds. He had only minutes left to live. And the private looked up to Father Tom, and he said, Father Tom, is God really like Jesus? That's the question you need to ask when you're about to meet your Maker. That's what you need to know. You need to know that the one you're about to meet, beyond death and in all eternity, is like Jesus. And Tom Torrance was able to say, He is the only God there is. Jesus is the only God there is. And what, and what uh, Tom Torrance is saying is, Jesus is the Word of the Father. And you don't get to see any other God other than the Word of the Father. The, the revelation of God has come to you. And if you want to see God, then look to Jesus. But when you look at Jesus, you can be utterly assured that God is the Christ-like God. As an old uh, Archbishop of Canterbury once said, God is Christ-like, and in Him there is no unchristlikeness at all. What a wonderful truth to remember at Christmas, that the one who is born among us is expressing the very nature and glory of God to us. This is what God is like. Look to the manger and you'll see the God who wants to draw near to you. So that's the first truth. Jesus is the Word of the Father, perfectly expressing what God is like. But that Word, Jesus, He became flesh. Uh, in Latin, uh, he uh, took on carnus. Carnus, um, it's where we get the word incarnation from. And if you don't know the word incarnation, perhaps you know the word reincarnation. It's the idea of being enfleshed. The word became enfleshed, became incarnated. Now, to get, give you a sense of what that word carnus means, that, that Latin word, um, have you ever been to, I don't know, a Mexican restaurant or a Spanish restaurant and, and you've, uh, you've ordered chili con carne? Have you ever eaten chili con carne? What is chili con carne? When you translate it out of Spanish, it's chili with meat. Okay, and that's, that's really preserved the, the meaning of the Latin word carnus. It's meat. And it's really preserved uh, the, the Greek word sarx, which John uses in John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became meat. What a base description of what humanity is. Why, why does John use that word flesh? Um, because he's really wanting to say, The Word of the Father really came down to meet us where we are. It's astonishing. He he really took on flesh. You know, I mean, for goodness sakes, he participated in mammalian birth. That's how far down he came. He became meat. He became flesh. Flesh that needed to be smacked to elicit that precious first breath. Flesh that would get nappy rash. Flesh that would develop acne. Flesh that would get sunburn in the Mediterranean uh, heat. 
flesh that could be cut and bleed, flesh that would be cut and bleed for you. The Word became flesh. Why? Well, there's an ancient saying all throughout the church, um, right back from, uh, it was before um, Athanasius, I think think Irenaeus said it as well in, in the second century, he became what we are so that we might become what he is. He became what we are, flesh, in all the vulnerability and even on the cross in all our sinfulness. He took on our flesh. He became what we are so that we might become what He is. What, he, what is He? He is the one and only Son. So what do we become when we come to Him? We become children of the same Heavenly Father. To all who received Jesus, this is verse 12, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. He, the Word of the Father, the eternal Son of God, became what we are, flesh, in all our vulnerability, in all our suffering, and on the cross, in all our sin. He became what we are joined us in our mess, lifted us onto his shoulders and walked us out of this valley of the shadow. He became what we are so that we might become what he is. If we receive Jesus, then we get him as our very own brother. We become children of the same Heavenly Father. We become filled with the same Spirit. We are given that same eternal life, all because the Word became flesh.